Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. In this video, in continuation to our previous video of the stern tube and its stern tube blue oil system, we would explain the different troubleshooting aspects on the stern tube blue oil system and also the different kind of defects or faults that you would usually encounter and the countermeasures that you have to take for such instances. So let us start. On board a ship, as we had explained in the previous video that if the oil supply in the stern tube is under the head due to gravity and also of forced nature, there would be options to change over the supply of the oil for the aft seal between the high and the low tank. That is, the high and the low designation is given with respect to the height at which these tanks are installed. So, when the vessel is sailing as a deeper draft, then the amount of force exerted by the water in the external surrounding on the outward most seal that is the aft seals outward most seal would be high. So the lubrication of the seal as well as the sealing pressure of the oil that is to be supplied has to be higher and thereby the tank in use would be the high tank or the aft stern tube seal tank of high designation. Now as I had explained in the previous video that in most of the modern systems there would be an alarm integrated into it and also an audio visual integration that would help you remember that due to the changing draft between the ballast and the laden the tanks have to be changed over for supply. Now for any unfortunate circumstances let's say we forget this changeover then what would happen if you are in a ballast condition that means the outside or the external forces are lesser and the inside that is the oil system is still on the high side that is higher head so the oil would inadvertently even though in very minute quantity would leak to the external surroundings now is this a violation so most of the grades of oil that are used for direct exposure are biogrades. That means a very finite quantity of these oils in terms of accidental leakages are acceptable and one of them is the Stantio Bio 100 grade which is most commonly manufactured and circulated for the modern stern tube systems. So the answer is yes, very finite and limited quantity of leakage due to the incorrect lineup of the valve can still be acceptable but this is no excuse and hence it needs to be carefully executed and in case later on there is an inspection or certain steps are taken, all these things are within the recording system. So that is why every step taken by the watchkeeper and the duty engineer and the overall responsible engineers are accountable. Now similarly, let us imagine a situation where the vessel is at a higher draft. Let's say for example, the submerged area of the vessel is much more than in the ballast condition. So now let's say it is at 100% laden condition or 95% laden condition. Now the forces exerted by the water on the outside would be much higher, obviously. But what if we still keep the selection of the tank for the aft seal lower one that is the aft stern tube seal tank for the low header. In that condition what would happen is that water inevitably would enter into the system albeit it might be in a very small quantity or maybe in a larger quantity depending upon the condition of the seal and the number of hours for which the seal has been in use. So first of all if it is a finite quantity there has to be a drainage method that is the stern tube water drain tank or the drain collecting tank is the one which is responsible for such leakages or such ingress to be drained out properly and then in case if this ingress is too high and if the seals are worn out then this would mix with the oil which is there in the system and create sludge. Now this sludge would inevitably start circulating within the system and not only would it choke the system but also damage the entire system including the seals. So now from here let us bifurcate into another troubleshooting or another operational inefficiency within the stern tube system which is the sludge in the system. So as I said that any external water ingress or also if in case there are crossover lines or let's say within the tank itself if there is precipitation because as we know there are a number of tanks involved in the process of the movement and the shifting of the oil if there is enough precipitation the sludge and emulsification of the oil can occur and this means that not only the lines and the walls would get choked but it would also increase the viscosity reduce the ability to exchange heat and cool down the stern tube system and the bearings and thereby damage the seals as well as the bearing. 
Now, as we can understand, to rectify this situation, either you can systematically cleanse the oil or purify the oil if you have a portable purification system or you might need to carry out a complete cleaning and flushing of the system with new oil and thereby replacement of the entire batch of oil. But again, if your leakage is not rectified or ingress of water is not taken care of, then everything and anything that you do to rectify the situation of sludge formation and emulsification would be useless. Now, this is where I will again bifurcate into another troubleshooting aspect for a common fault in this turn tube system, which is the worn out seals. Now, worn out seals can be an effect of a number of factors. So for example, if I had the opportunity to replace these seals at a major event such as a dry dock, but I have not done it adequately and the seals were already in a worn out condition or let's say I am not aware of it at all because of minor markings on the liner and at that point of time it was acceptable when the dry dock was carried out but later on it abraded more and more. Or sometimes it can be due to the incorrect circulation of oil, due to the incorrect header or the pressure of oil and a lot of other factors due to the incorrect pressure with which it is supplied and also due to the prior emulsification because of the condensate formation. All these things can result into the wear down of the seals. These reasons predominantly exist for the aft seals whereas for the forward seals because it is in towards the engine room facing situation, dirt ingress, solid particle ingress and excessive vibration can also be another reason for the wear down of the seals. So now imagine a situation where your seals have worn out and you still do not have time to replace them completely because as we know that any access to the aft seal specially has to be done from the aftmost end that is towards the propeller end and it only has to be done when removal of all the guards take place and the accessible areas are clearly visible and through the replacement holes you will be able to access the seals. So now under running condition if I see that my leakage from the stern tube system is too high. That means too high a water ingress is there. I can understand that my aftmost seal has worn down. In the situations, we have standby seals. So for example, if in the diagram, you will see that there are multiple seals, let's say three or four seals. What happens is under normal usage, predominantly one or two seals are in use. By in use, what I mean is that the oil is forced in those chambers where these seals are placed and the sealing and the pressurization is only within these chambers. Whereas in case of emergency situations, the standby seals can be utilized by changing over the walls smartly and efficiently and allowing the other seals in the design to come into play and then together for the definite period of time before which we cannot replace these seals because of let's say unavailability of the dry docking options or the trading nature of the vessel we can sail with this condition now obviously because of the wear down there might be a slight amount of oil leakage into the outer equilibrium system or into the outer seaside but as I said that because of the biodegradable or the bio nature of the oil, it is acceptable and hence not harmful to the marine or the aquatic environment. The wear down of the wearing or the thinning of the liner that is the bearing and the liner are also common parts which are exposed to common defects which can occur in a stern tube system. This can again be a result of all the factors that we have discussed before and additionally it might also be due to the excessive vibration that occurs in the tail shaft system. Now this vibration would not only be limited to the stern tube system as a source of origin. It can most probably result from the main engine's vibrations or the hull vibrations. That is why it is very important from the machinery perspective as well as the operational perspective to always make sure that our dampers, detuners and the other aspects or the countermeasures which we have taken to take care of the dampening of the vibrations on board are always in a top-notch condition. So specifically third engineers or second engineers who are responsible for these machineries need to make sure that all these machineries are in top-notch condition. A very important aspect that we often overlook during our watches because of 
लेजीनेस और बिकॉज ऑफ ओवर फेमिलियरिटी और लेथार्जिकनेस इन आर नॉर्मल सेलिंग एटमोस्फेयर इज द ऑयल लेवल एंड द टेम्परेचर ऑफ द बियरिंग नो आफ्ट सील एंड फॉरवर्ड सील्स बोथ हैव डेजिग्नेटेड टैंक्स विच एज आई सेड आर इन यूज फॉर दीज सील्स सो इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू प्रेस द इंडिकेटर ऑफ द लेवल गेज एंड करेक्टली चेक द लेवल ऑफ ऑयल नाउ एन एक्सपीरियंस इंजीनियर वुड ऑल्सो नो दैट द कलर ऑफ द ऑयल विच इज विजिबल थ्रू दीज गेजेज ऑल्सो इज ऑल्सो अ वेरी गुड इंडिकेटर of what condition the oil is so for example if there is carbon ingress or wear down of the bearings or let's say carry over or sludge formation the oil would start turning blackish or brownish or would start have floating particles in itself during the operational conditions similarly if there is water ingress you might see emulsification which is of pale yellowish color and also bubble formation and trapped bubbles are also an indicative of air ingress into the system so it is very important to make sure that the tanks are correctly checked through the gauges through vents and the other available spots which are necessary during the watch keeping measures in the similar manner checking the temperature of the stern tube bearing would help you realize that the oil circulation is correct the bearing and the liner conditions are correct there is no excessive wear down and also to make sure that the stern tube is not getting excessively heated due to any other surrounding factors i hope that all these aspects will help you realize the operational parameters and the steps that you have to take while having this conventional system of stern tube on board your vessel and in case if you would like to discuss any of the problems that you have encountered before or suggest any more precautions that you might have taken additionally on similar systems we welcome you to drop down into the comment section and let us know your experiences also help us in spreading our word of mouth by sharing our videos liking our content and also inviting your friends and colleagues to subscribe to our page thank you